My name is Notepad and I write games for fun. So what are we doing today? Well, today we're going to be working on Project Tactics Flag Bearer. This should actually be the final day of Project Tactics Flag Bearer, actually. This game always was, from the onset, not exactly supposed to be a long game by any stretch of the imagination. It was supposed to be one just to clean things up more than anything. And it has been cleaned. Quite a bit, actually. Seriously, like, there, there's a lot of things I just cleaned in this game. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, no, I have a rush. I have a rush in believing in things. So, what has changed from last time? Not much. Not much has actually changed. The only major thing has changed. Come on, I believe in you so much. The only thing that has majorly changed was one, I kind of, I cleaned these up finally. As you can see, they're all nice, pretty, and all, all of them have been renamed. Most of them have stayed relatively the same, except the ones we went over last time. Uh, let's see. These got changed. Uh, the, the, uh, what is that one? Hello, hello, hello you too. Hello, Varric. Yes, the Russian is here. Uh, the only one that really got changed was the Revolutionary in this one, because the Revolutionary got turned into... The signifier, which is the, which is the Roman term for what they were, they're flag carriers, effectively, they're flag bearers. That's all they were, and that's their entire gimmick. They actually don't have any, barely any equipment. Their entire thing is that they have the flag, which is really important to them. Uh, I actually struggled to find a good name for a horse archer. There is no good name for a horse archer <laughs> that I haven't already used. Because I'm like, oh, Cossack, not Cossacks. Uh, Cataphracts, already used Cataphracts. Um, Hussar, already used Hussars. So, they kind of just remain horse archers. <laughs> Ta-da! Uh, let's see what other ones got changed around. These got changed, obviously. We went over these last time. As you can kind of see, they kind of got their own different things. They aren't perfect, but they work. Oh, uh, where was it? Where was it? And the bishop tree. Most of the bishop tree remained exactly the same. Nothing really changed in here. Uh, where is... And nothing really changed in the nave troops either. Really, it was a pretty standard job of just fixing everything up to make things as pretty as possible. Because that's what I was looking to do. Make them pretty. Make them simple make them easy to work with so 
what are we doing today? Well, today we're going to be working on equipment and down, pretty much. As you can see, there isn't actually much to change here. Because guess what? There really doesn't need to be. Where's the Black Mage? Where's the Black Mage? Well, the Black Mage is... If I scroll up here a little bit. Uh, the Black Mage kind of just gets folded into a few different ones. I didn't want to call something the Black Mage just because that was a little bit too on the nose, ironically. So you end up with Sorcerer, Arcanist, uh, I'm going to misspell, uh, Hexer, Warlock, Channeler, and the Vreator. 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 God, I fucking hate check. I love it. I hate it. And those are kind of the, the four. Those, like, this is, this entire bottom area is black mages. The Magus in general, you can consider it black mage. Uh, let's see. What's some other ones? Like, I try to keep the names, like, simple enough to understand, but it's kind of weird at the same time. Hence why I just use... Yeah, spell fencers, baby. Hey, it's... Don't mock me, my spell fencers. I love spell fencers. I think it's a really cool name that's really underused. <laughs> uh, let's see what if we go down here. But yeah, no, mostly we're going to be going over weapons. Weapons aren't going to change that much. It's mostly going to be a lot of wording changes down here. And let me see if we scroll down here a little bit more. Then we get to do. <laughs> then we get trooper equipment. Trooper equipment sucks. <laughs> And you want to know why it sucks? It sucks because I have to manage it all, like, there's a lot of little micro stuff for this one. And as you can see, all of the tables are slightly different sizes, because I actually didn't know how to adjust tables back in the day. This is, uh, way back in the time. Also, they deal extra damage to the... Yeah, what? What? Nani? Notepad? Please? Uh... Then we have some basic ones down here just to kind of fix up and make a little bit better. After that, really, we're pretty much good. Like, we... This wasn't ever supposed to be a long rule. Most of the actual, like, extended rules here... I went over these the other night. I'm like, okay, let's go over them. Let's understand what's what. And I came to the conclusion that, ta-da, I don't really need to worry about them. Because either they're really franchise-specific, like bongas or hivers, or they are not really who cares kind of thing, like on the creation of new troops. Since I didn't commit to the to an original setting, I didn't really need it. It's not really a fantasy setting, not really not a fantasy setting. So it's the, here's how you make new troops. That's it, really. Like, you, depending on what your troops, you get some attributes, and you attribute contribution. That's it. Not exactly the most complex characters in the world. Um, as you can see, I kind of went over, like, I have some example troop, you know, dwarf miners and stuff like that, because, hey, I thought dwarf miners were kind of interesting. And you have Shek, who are like, hey, Shek are Shek. They get their own cool stuff. Then big troopers are big troopers. That's really it. Like, there isn't, there, there isn't actually much to do. But that's half the fun, isn't it? Because this is actually going to be a pretty short uh, episode, relatively speaking. But it will allow me to kind of start going over some other things I plan on doing. Plan. I cannot win for losing. Give me one moment.
I love my mom to death. Don't get me wrong. I love my mom. She's a great person. She will call at the worst physical times imaginable because that is just how she rolls. And I've just accepted that as a part of my life. Like she will call me right when like I'm doing something. Like it's time to go out and like get it, my mom will call. Like, oh no, it's time for me to do literally anything. She will call and she will want to talk. Mostly because she only likes to talk. A lot. So, what are we doing? So, equipment is... Ah, God, why do I keep calling it micro-combat? I'm gonna have to go... Actually, let's do a little... Let's, let's do a little look. Where do I call micro? Micro-combat... Okay, so we need, we're going to go here, we're going to replace with Skirmish. There we go, we don't really need to worry about that anymore, okay. Uh, be a, a devout. There we go. A year ago, Notepad had a lot of cool ideas. Those a lot of cool ideas led to him making stupid choices. Whether well, fighting with honor efficiency, equipment plays a vital part of captains after lead the troop in battle. Um, equipment listed as captains and, and duels. That's captain grows and plot and plot. As the captains grow and plunge deeper into dangerous territory, they may find the ever you know even more exciting and dangerous equipment armor to wield against their foes. Okay. Okay, so these are pretty standard stuff. I do, I do highlight the fact they are martial weapons. Do I make a point about this anywhere else? No, I really don't make a point about this. Why am I putting this here? Okay, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna make those go away. Why? Because you are. A captain. You don't need to worry about that kind of stuff. Because you're cool. God. Why do I keep putting ubiquitous in these things, too? I had an I, I had a, 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 an obsession with ubiquitous for a very long time. Because I just like the idea. I like the word. I like the name. I don't need it, though. It's an unnecessary thing. So we're just going to get those away. Why is the crowbill only... No, okay, we need Pierce 3 on the crowbill. Ubiquitous basic. No, I don't need it. Rehand basic. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Marshall, alright. Dual wield. Marshall, don't need it. And Axe Ubiquitous, don't need it. The fact that this is concealable, and that's important. Marshall, don't need it. Why do I have to keep having it? Uh, da, 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 we don't need that. Please tell me I put in Graceful. Please, please, oh please tell me I did. Okay, so we got our, oh my god, why did I put so much of it? And the thing is, I can't get rid of it. I can't just go, you know, control F, control search, and find that. Because it actually plays an important part with non, with non-characters in that regard. It plays an important with, uh, you know, the troopers and such. So if I take it out, that way would also get rid of all the trooper ones, which I need. So, let's see. I also have the... Bizarre type with slings. Slings is one of the most complicated weapons in gaming. You wanna know why slings are complicated? What the fuck is a sling? Is it a thrown weapon? Is it a bow? What is it? It's a thing you swing around and throw a rock at someone's head. It's the greatest weapon of all time and it has killed more things than we would probably like to admit. But what do you call it? I've, I've traditionally put it under bow. Like a bow and arrow, because you're you string, you're throwing it, it kind of requires that same amount of dexterity and strength. That's what I've traditionally put it under. Is that right? Probably not. 
And actually, that reminds me, I should put a range on those, shouldn't I? Two spaces instead of one. Actually, no, it's one. Y All right, two units instead of one. Do I put graceful in? Yes. Uh, dexterity instead of strength. Actually, could be coordination. Instead of strength. Uh, take the highest value. Freehand. Dual wield. Will can be used attack. Concealable. Ammunition. Rolls a one. They run out of ammo. Those are two hits. You run out of ammo. Complicated. Was... Why, why do I keep putting that in? I don't need that. What is, what is common? No pad. No oh, pad, please. Um, I, I don't use complicated for much. So, okay, we're going to get rid of complicated. We don't need it. You want to know what we do with things we don't need? We make it go away. I've made a mistake. Tune to be used properly. Attunement. Important. Remember to use things... You remember to use your terms correctly, because that is always something I have a bad tendency with. Because if I... Because usually what occurs is that I forget to use it. Then things get wiggity whack. Because I keep forgetting to add things later, and then it builds on top of each other, and suddenly the entire thing is rapidly collapsing around me. Uh, stun, graceful, long distance melee. Stun, 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 stun. That reminds me I need to put ranges on here. Maybe we do something like that. Then we put range. Uh, range and then units. So roughly if every unit's about five, we will say uh, that would be six actually we'll yeah that'd be about six units eight units four units uh mechan of good old-fashioned mechanical crossbow because we all like mechanical crossbows because i think they're cool you're going to have six javelin you're going to have your strength in spaces which can be pretty damn long you're going to have a pretty long range you're going to have a shorter range sling is going to have a range equal to str plus well, we'll do str plus four and a throwing knife is going to have up to your strength yeah strength so pretty much if you have a strength of six you're going to be able to eat that knife pretty quickly you know pretty well because it is a giant it is a knife that you are throwing at someone ow ow that's not Ew. oh no Oof. there we are when my back snaps back into place. Armor based uh, armor is based on damage resistance and the armor penalty. Okay, let me see. Let's reword this. Are you in the right font? Or are you the right font? Wait a second. Yeah, everything's using archive. Wait, you're using Arial. What? No. Why are you using Ariel? Nani? Nani? Have I just not noticed this was using the wrong font the entire time? Oh, Notepad, why are you the way that you are? Yeah, you're using all Ariel. Why are you using Ariel? See, this is the this is the big think times that happens with me. Like fun things don't fun things don't go wrong with me. Oh no. It's you know, Notepad forgets to properly put in the, the right font. And now everything looks whack. I knew things looked whack. We have armor. You should all be archivo, yeah. You're archivo? Yeah, you're archivo. You're you are Ariel though. 
Ooh. Okay. So let's just do an armor real fast. Armor is based up. So armor is armor. Actually, armor protects. Armor protects the captain. Captain in the heat in the heat of battle. Ever uh, each armor type. Armor type grants damage damage resistance. Uh, each armor type grants damage resistance. But they reduce the t they reduce the free speed. Actually, they reduce the free movement of, of the captain by a certain amount as well. By a certain amount as well. It's a trade. It's a trade off. It's a trade off between speed and protection. Uh, but actually, they reduce the free move. They reduce the free movement of the of the captain, as well as a maneuver pen, as well as a maneuver penalty. Forcing forcing the cat forcing the captain into a balancing act. Act of protection. You know, protection and speed. I can actually still we want to do that. Alright. Uh cabin font? No, this is uh this is archivo. See, I try to use a different font for every single game. I try to. Because I was for a very long time an archivo supremacist. Uh you know, I just used archivo for everything. But in recent recent times I've been like it's time to use different things. I want to use different fonts. I want to use kind of play what works. Uh, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. I think this one, this is just archivo black on archivo. It's very dull, but it's 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 been functional. Like this is like you'll you'll notice probably with all of my older games that the fonts are not the fonts are very utilitarian. They're very simple and very to the point. Newer games tend to I tend to explore a little bit more with the fonts, kind of use it because there are a lot of Google fonts. I don't think people realize how many fonts Google has. Like there is an absurd number of Google fonts. They just don't show you them all. Like it's weird because they don't show you like most of these. Like, there are an absurd number of them. You have to add them to your list of what you would want. And if you don't put them in there, they just aren't there. But the thing, too, is some of them aren't actually here either. They're not They're not in here. So, like, I, there, I have an add-on called uh, Extensus Fonts. Like, a pop-up over here. Like, Extensus Fonts does every single physical kind of Google font that they have. And even ones that are in like different, like primarily made for different languages. They have all of them in here that may not be in the main Google way. Why Google does this? I have no idea. I think it's probably just for processing power tier. some reason I'm also dropping frames. Why am I dropping frames? Ah, delicious. Delicious water. So let's see. And it's, it's also trade off between speed and tech. Bouncing and bouncing act speed. So what we need to do is we'll call this the maneuver penalty. We're going to insert column to the right. What's the size here? Can, maybe we can do 1.25. Select everything here. Table properties. 1.25. Can we do 1.25 for everything? Yeah, well, yeah, totally. Yeah, okay, that's nice. And Okay, so what we need to do here. That we need to do... Movement modifier, movement modifier. 
which does remind me. I need to double check what the the base movement actually is. What did I actually put the base movement? Uh, six. So, okay, six is the base movement. If six is the base movement. So, zero would obviously be zero. It'd be negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. So, you can move two, two, three, four, five, and six, which I think is pretty fair. Yeah, conspiracy font's funny. Like, there's a few fonts that I actually really like. Let's see, plate and breastplate. These aren't actually very good examples. What I should do is put, like, ch I'd say put chain, like, chain and ring right here. Because, like, once you hit, like, past this, armor gets a lot more theoretical. That's a lot more. Well, this might have been an armor. Like, this might have been a, you know, been something. So, I'll actually, I'll, what I'll probably do is go back into here, and actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to label this real fast. I have, I think I have a chart somewhere that goes over all these. Uh, let's see, uh, shields operate similar to damage resist, and we'll call this the maneuver. Uh, we'll call it the maneuver penalty. Line the character using one attack to make an enemy with a shield with a strength check. Damage resistance, one buckler. Nope. Really, it's not... You should actually use bucklers. Bucklers are actually pretty decent. Like, it's just a free damage resistance. There's You're not really taking any penalties to it. Uh, two, three, four, yeah. This, this works the way I want it to. Okay, now we get down to trooper equipment. Trooper equipment is... Here's where things get a little bit whack with the game. So let's say you have... Let, let, let's just say, for example, you have five troopers in your squad. And for sake of ease, each of them are the same trooper. Let's just say they are infantry. And infantry, if I remember correctly, can use, I think, martial. I think they can use martial weapons. Yeah, I think they can use martial melee, like one-handed martial melee weapons. I'm now going to check because I do not feel confident in my own light armor, basic hand weapons, medium shields. Ah, this is why we double check. This is why we double check, kids. So, we can use basic melee weapons and, you know, medium shields. So, what you can do, in theory, if you want, is equip each one of these guys with the same kind of duff. Which is going to give them all benefits. So your soldiers won't fight very effect very well if they aren't armed. Won't fight well. Actually, what you should say is don't fight well if they aren't armed. They won't last long either if they have no armor. Not fitting your war band. Not fitting your squad in the war in the war band. War band sending old equipment is brought along essential for creating a an effective fighting force. All the troopers' weapons are added together to determine the final amount of bonus damage that is applied when the squad attacks. Calculate to the damage resistance to individual members. Certain troops can only take certain weapons available to them, such as basic and martial weapons. So, for example, we're going to be, we got our, our batch of infantry. What do we want to equip them with? Well, I'm feeling pretty damn confident in my boys. Which is to say, I don't feel confident at them in the slightest. So, we're going to be equipping them with, let, let's, uh, you know what? I think we're going to be equipping them with simple spears. You know, simple spear. So three of them are going to get simple spears. So we got a one. One. And one. We actually hit... We are... If we go against cavalry, we're going to be able to do something pretty good. Two of my guys, though, we want these guys to be kind of our backup guys. You know, we're going to give a short sword and a short sword to them. Two short swords. Now we're looking like, okay, we've got that, you know, we've got that kind of sorted out. So now we need to double check to make sure everything actually looks the way it should. Yeah, this just needs to be... 
this what this needs to be is I need to go in there and click two buttons. It's currently actually, what's this table property? 2.5. Yeah, let's do 2.5. What are you? 2.2.5. Tags, what are you? You mean 2.5. What are you? 2.5. What are you? 8 points, uh, 0.875. God damn. There we go. Technically, I could shrink. Actually, should I shrink these down? If I bring you down to one, what do you look like? A little bit chunky. So maybe we bring you down to 1.5 instead. Something like that. A little bit oblonged, but what actually I know what I can do now. What I can do is do table properties, put you to the left. Put you to the left and slap a picture of a spear or something right there. Ha ha. Thunk. Big thunk. It's your boy notepad with the big thunks going on right now. So let's see. Da, 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 da. Now, mind you, I also have a WVT. I have the WVT thread open. Just because I'm waiting for someone to, like, post in there being like, why are you a faggot? I'm waiting for it. I am accepting it. Am I shit posting on WVT as we post right now? Yes. Because I have no honor. Oh, wait a second. I forgot you have three more under here. And why would... Wait. If you do that, why would you even go under there? Would it be because... No, that wouldn't be it. One, two, three. So this would be... Would that do it? No, no, no. That's, that's silly. Yeah, no, that wouldn't work. Okay, so now we have... Now we have a... Now we have a scenario in our heads right now, and that scenario is the fact that I need to maybe put this down here, move range weapons down one, they get their own page, they get their own page, unless, unless we do something really janky. Maybe if I reduce the size here, reduce the size here. And because all of these are already, maybe if I go down to 10 point font on both of these. Now, now we get to do some ultimate, you know, ultimate jank works here. So we want to do insert table two by two. I'm going to select all of you We want to drag you in there. Select all of you. Drag you in here. We need to make you as small and as tight as possible. I am going to jail for that comment, by the way. Oh, don't worry. I've accepted my lot in life. So, let's see. If we want to do that, that'd be table properties. You'd be... Bring you down to one... Let's bring you down to one. No work, yes. Everything's coming up, Millhouse. No. Oh no. Uh, maybe point six seven five. Point six seven five. Tags. What size of the tags? Can we do size one? Middle. No, yeah, we want to do top. Yeah, table. Fun fact: tables and tables are a little bit complicated, but it's actually the only way to make tables do this. 
in the entire way of doing that in Google Docs. Why is this the only way? I will never know. However, it is very useful. Because you can do a little bit of mimicry with it. And then, boom, we've got both of them. We're right where we need them. Now I have to shrink down all the tables to 10. Usually you can get away with shrinking all the tables down to 10 regardless, but sometimes it's a little bit harder, sometimes a little bit easier. It kind of depends on what you're doing at the current time. Someone is pinging me. Who's pinging me? Oh, it's someone wanting critique on their game. And, skip. and the, th the thing is, I don't care. Because yeah, there are... <laughs> Being part of a game design server has its benefits and it has its drawbacks. And the main drawback is that people ping you a lot asking for feedback. And the secret is, I don't really give good feedback. Because I am very utilitarian when it comes to feedback. I'm like, this isn't, I don't like this, or this isn't very good, let me tell you why. I'm not fun when I when I give feedback to people. I have made someone cry before because I was very mean when I was giving feedback. 2.5? No, that's not gonna work. Because I will tell it I will tell you how it be, and sometimes I'm like, yeah, this game kind of sucks. Like, please fix this. You you offend me with your presence doing this. Why aren't you going up to the right? Damage is the wrong size then? Yeah. Oh, what? God damn. Okay, well, I wonder if I can mimic, do some little bit of mimicry here. Simple throne. Yeah, is simple throne literally just throwing rocks at the enemy? <laughs> Varric. I've told you this before, I don't like reviewing people I actually know's games. You're... You're already in here. And if you ever do want opinions, literally just yell at me. Like, just say, notepad, give me feedback, and I'll be like, cool, I will do my best. But usually I don't give feedback. Unless they really want it, or you're in the thread. I will say that, if you are in the thread, then yeah, I will give, I'll try my best to get feedback. But sometimes it don't, it don't work. Gonna be, gonna be perfectly frank with you. Ooh. And already, you're in, I know you're in GDG. And because I know you're in GDG, I... I actually try to actively avoid people and thread who are, uh, who I think are part of GDG simply because I don't want to be like, oh, he's playing favorites or something. No, I'm not. I just don't want to, de like, nope. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to zoom in. Squad attacks the cavalry trooper, they deal extra damage. So when, when the squad attacks, actually when the squad hits a cavalry trooper, trooper, the ex, the extra damage die, the extra damage die are rolled and added to the damage toward that, toward that troop, toward that trooper. If multiple caval, multiple cavalry are target, are targeted. Are actually multiple tech cavalry are hit, they may distribute. They may distribute the damage. If you get crashed with some like three art, you know, three cavalry guys, it's also very pertinent to like spread that damage out. But you're also spreading damage out the cavalry, and cav guys actually don't have that much health. Also because you can potentially be rolling like 3d6 against a single cavalry guy which will kill them 
Like, if you... Like, you can very easily kill people with spears. So, reload. Number of turns required to reload the weapon. Turn stagger. During a focus action, troop does not contribute their... Entry piercing. Uh, yeah. Okay, this is pretty standard stuff. Armor on shields. Light armor, bonus health, damage resistance. Yeah. They don't actually get anything fun and exciting. So we could say something like... Actually, give me one second. I gotta remember. Do infantry. I believe infantry gets some. Do infantry get health? Get armor? They get light armor. Yeah, righto. Cool. So, our, uh, you know, looking at these guys, we're going to have to think about our guys up here. So what do we want to give them? Well, we want to give you guys light armor. Like, it's, it's a good idea to give everyone light armor currently. Light. Get it, everyone, light armor. Good idea. We like giving ever all our boys light armor. Uh, do we want to be cheap? Well, because the thing is, we can be cheap or we can be expensive and get... Uh, but we want to be... Probably we want to be a little bit cheap with... Actually, let's not skimp out on our infantry here. We're going to give them light shields. However, our swords guys, we want them to last a little bit longer, so we're going to give them medium shields. These are going to be the guys who are actually going to be taking our the damage up front. And this is kind of like what a squad might look like. But mind you, these guys are going to change over time. They're going to upgrade and change. So this might be early campaign, but late campaign... You might look like, you know, you might have some, like, a great shield in here. You, you might have quite a few different options among your soldiers. That's the point. That's what I want to occur. I feel that's very important. Why are you, why, why is WVT the way it is? Compared to other pieces, quick kind of fairly unique. For every trooper matches on cavalry beast, squad receives a total of plus one to their base movement. However, squad can no longer move on. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, cavalry. Cavalry is weird. Like, the amount of, like, logic that goes into, like, what kind of horse do I want to breed? Yeah, a lot of these don't... <laughs> Shock Beast, Endurance Beast, Aggressive Beast, Mobility Beast, Tank Beast. I don't really clarify what's what, uh, because I feel that's what I want. That's what I want to kind of tell people. So I want to give people kind of some more options of what they kind of, what they're kind of doing in that regard. So let's see uh, what kind of beast they are certain... Oh. Okay, so what we need to do, we need to put you down here. Oh, plus one to their total uh, bonus. Well, actually, no. However, each cavalry beast. Uh, bonus dam. Uh, bonus dam. Uh, charge. Actually, what we're going to call it, we're going to call it charge damage. Charge damage increases the base amount of damage the cavalry will do do when performing a forming a charge while the penalty well the actual we'll call it while the stuck in com while the stuck in penalty Well, stuck in penalty is a damage, uh, which is a damage mod. Actually, the, well, the stuck in modifier is the bonus or neg or pe or negative damage done by by the cavalry 
if they are if they are in com if they are in combat. Finally, the bonus move bonus movement is default is default one, but can be further modified. And do it. So pretty much the idea is if I charge, I'm charging with all my might. I'm going to be doing bonus damage if I'm on the right kind of creature. If I'm on a good horse that's going to be able to charge into something and do a lot of damage, that's great. However, I'm going to be taking big penalties in some cases because that initial shock is done. Once that initial shock is done, immediately now I'm kind of at the mercy of my enemy. So what we'll do is the stuck in, we'll call this the stuck in modifier. And we'll do this, the charge damage. Uh, should I add a, actually no, I don't think I should add a health bonus or anything. Yeah, it's pretty standard assortment of them. Lap a picture right there of a horse or something. Uh, non-player characters. Let's actually do opposing character for skirmish against combat, but it's ultimately the character's own will dastardly reduce to match for weaker foes. Most of these characters have little in the way of tactics, but some may possess some tricks up their sleeves. Archer. And these are actually all taken almost one for one from their counterparts in a squad. <laughs> yeah, we gotta... I don't even remember where I got him from. I think I was looking up, like, Bandit, and he was the first one came up. Cavalry is kind of weird in that regard. And no, non-player characters are pretty simple to make like i don't i didn't want them to make them like really complicated just make it just make enemies just do stuff because you get things like bandit bandits only have 11 hp like you're going to be able to like cleave through bandits pretty fucking quickly as a, as a captain the problem is is when there are 20 bandits and or when there's 30 bandits like that's the problem when that's where kind of like the warband size comes in. You by yourself are incredibly strong and can take down a couple of them, but you're going to get overwhelmed, hence why you have a squad. Or you end up with things like the broken one, who has zero tactics and just doesn't die. He doesn't need anything. Actually, uh, let's see. Uh, maneuver, penal maneuver penalty. Negative one. Uh, negative uh, five movement. Five movement. Uh, we'll do... Actually, how many times do we use the term AP throughout this? Wow. There's a lot of instances of the, web, of the term AP being used. But it's all like that. God damn it. Okay, let's... Space. Space. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight instances of this. Okay, so a lot of it's here. Yeah, everything's here. So we can replace that with uh, maneuver. We can do that with I put space in here? Yeah, so we don't put that right down here. But with that, the maneuver penalty, replace all. There we go. Maneuver penalty. Haha. -ha. I am a genius. I'm not. Like, uh, uh, let's see. Medium armor. So, as with light armor, you would get five movement. Five movement. Medium armor, armor, you would get four movement. Maneuver penalty, because we will only get four movement. Yeah. 
So yeah, you'd get standard because you don't have any armor. Two damage reduction, four movement. Cossack, you would get four movement. Even though technically calling them Cossack would not be is not quite the right term. Okay, we're like right there again, again. No armor, don't have to worry about it. Yes, Frothing Berserker, otherwise known as fuck you, fuck your shit, and fuck all your health. You don't need that where we're going. Uh, glad gladiator, gladiator, gladiator. You want five movements. Light armor, guess what? You're going to be five movements. Medium armor, you're going to be four. You're going to be, yeah, you're going to be four movement. They're taking a negative six. Yeah, holy soldiers take a negative six to any maneuvers they pull off, but uh, guess what? You're also a fucking... Like, that is your entire gimmick. Like, you aren't... You are stabbing people to death. Infantry. Pretty standard stuff. If you haven't quite noticed yet, not many people wear heavy armor. Like, you don't need to wear heavy armor. It's heavy armor sucks. The people wearing heavy armor are the people who are probably going to kill you if they, they know what the hell they're doing. Monk, you don't actually... You, you have five armor. You have five movement. Well, naturals don't have anything. Neophytes have no armor. You have no armor. Uh, health, uh, an ally's health by... By 1d6.5. Neophytes use a meager bolt of magic. Raiders! You're gaining five movement. I'm not putting cavalry mechanics for these guys down for one very simple reason, and that is because uh, you already know what those do. And if you're fighting people on foot, oh, well, you, they have cavalry and you don't, something has gone drastically wrong for you, because they will probably hunt you down. Uh, light armor. Up a little bit, there we go. Medium armor, full movement. Yeah, one movement. Wardens are the first one who gets super heavy armor. And they also get crow bills, which crow bills are disgusting. Because Crowbills say, hey, you know that armor you have? Stab! You don't have any armor anymore. Stab! Uh, light of the F5 Cool. Opposing captains and squad does not possess a warband for the sake of having one. Actually, the... Uh, the captains... Captains do not possess... Uh, do not... Oh, do not... Do not manage... A war band for the sake of having one. There's a war to be fought and glory to be won by the blade. Captains engage in pitched warfare. The force will in every clash with opposing forces with... Uh, never really clash with opposing forces. Often with one side leaving bloody. Often... Often actually... Well, often ending in a bloody field. Roughly speaking, a basic captain should be on a single class with troops based around it. More advanced opponents may lead some player captains. Being able to mix and match their troops as well. So yeah, like all you have to do if you want to choose, you want you want to make your own very own captain. You want to make your very own enemy, you just choose one of these, distribute the attributes, choose your number of advancements you have. That's it. 
more advanced characters like hey you can maybe have two classes which is already kind of like a benefit for the players is that you have two classes they don't but they also have a really focused set of classes you know for example the mana lord lorem is lackey Ulmer. both of these men are dangerous to hunt individuals hunting the woodlands of the south so he uh, he has double he's a knave warlord and while Ulmer is a seasoned bishop these are the troops that he has. Actually, what I should call these. These are not so hey. Bandits are regular. It wouldn't be so hey now. They would be. What are you? What, what's your exact name again? Not a combat. Thaumaturge. Thaumaturge. Ah, yes. Ga it would be Gazis. Gazi and Kustal. Kustal Askas. Gotta make sure we got our names right. Gorilla regulars, yeah. Like these guys aren't really that special. Gary, all things considering. They just have a lot of stuff. Uh, extended rules. Needs to be really addressed here. Pretty much with like, if you want to be make fantastical allies or fantastical enemies, you can. Just say it. All races just get a plus one, minus one. That's all that really occurs. You want to be an elf, you get a plus one to admit negative one to your tactics. You don't really listen to things. You want to be a dwarf plus one tough, just negative one tunement. Like, that's... I wanted to make this pretty simple system. Uh, you can go higher. Like, Viera technically at two... Actually, it'd be two coordination. Two coordination. Uh, is there any other that... On the, you know, creation of new troops. These are pretty standard. Uh, if you're a skirmish enemy, then giving them a full attributes from their determinative key attributes, apply them to squad contributions, it's appropriate. Yeah, these are pretty standard stuff. Big troopers are the only weird ones. Uh, able to recruit supermassive troopers, such as giant griffin and other, other variety of other larger-than-average creatures. Fight alongside them. Bit more attributes than others, but take up two squad slots. Captain has five slots available to them and choose to recruit big troopers. They only have three soft average troopers. Yeah, like, the advantage of a big trooper is the fact that you have a massive thing here ready to beat the shit out of your enemies. I have a giant troll that follows me around and beats things. I have a golem who follows me around. I have a thing. I have a dragon that follows me around. Like, or a tiny dragon. Cool, that's a super massive troop. Good news. You have a super massive thing that's going to beat the shit out of things you don't want to be alive anymore. Bad news is, you have a giant thing everyone and their mother can look at and say, we need to kill that thing. <laughs> but mind you, like, some of these, like, big, you know, big foots, like, yeah, bridge troll, 3-2, medium armor, no weapon, just gives you a plus two strength to your squad. It doesn't, like, tier ones are not good. But then you get things like tier fours, who contribute one dex, two strength, two toughness, Super heavy armor, martial range weapons, and a massive bolt from their weapon dealing 2d6 to all troopers at a unit range 5. Hey, that person is 5 units away. What do we do? Boom. Die. Or, you know, the Ogre Mauler. Coating them on. Yeah, just like, be stupid when it comes to some of these bigger ones. Like, these are supposed to feel pretty impressive. So, I believe that's it, really. Not much changed, but what did what was changed was cleaning. Because that's what this project was. It was cleaning. And I believe we took away more than we actually added. Like, let, let's actually... Actually, I know for a fact we took away more. 
because I deleted it like I deleted like two, three pages worth of stuff just because it wasn't worth it. Like I didn't need it, so why have it? That was my that's my thing. When it comes to cleaning is cleaning is always the hardest. Because you never want to clean things you like. Yeah, no, we we cut about actually we increased the number of words but decreased the number of pages. Yeah, we let we draw, we cut four pages, uh, but we added about about a hundred words. Like only about a hundred words were actually added to this project. That's it, a hundred words. Doesn't seem very impressive, but we cleaned up what was there to make it a little bit easier to read, make it a little bit easier to understand. And so far, we're good. Life's good. I think that's kind of the end with Flag Bear. Flag Bear holds a special place in my heart. I wrote Flag Bear as a, a a game to say that I can because some I rem I remembered this distinctly. It was a thread on TG. Someone wanted a mountain blade game. Like I want to play a I want a mountain blade game. And every single person said, that's stupid. That is a stupid idea. No one, like, why would you want to do that? Like, why do you want a war band size game? Uh, like, or just play, oh, just play a war game. Just play that. Plus, just, you know, uh, you know, just play a war game or something like that. And it kind of occurred to me that there wasn't really, there wasn't really a game for that kind of scale. In either side. It was kind of weird to think about. There wasn't really a game in that kind of niche. Where either you have like these really single per people. These very single entities who do things. You know your traditional tabletop. Or you have war games which usually take up quite a few different people. And I had recently actually been looking more and more into war, war band gaming. Skirmish size uh, war gaming. Uh, because, A, it's a little bit easier to get into, and the rules are usually a little bit faster just to accommodate the number of units. I'm like, this is kind of interesting, so I'm like, I wonder if there's a, a, a midpoint. Can I take these the warband sensibilities of skirmish-sized war games, can I put it in, make it an RPG? And I did. And I, I'm, I'm proud of tactics. Like, tactics out of, like, all the games I've written. Tactics is probably one of the ones I'm like most proud of because it's, it's like, yeah, it just works the way I want it to. Uh, I've done a few sample ones. I'm just by myself. I'm like, okay, well, what would occur here? Battles get really meaty and I maybe a little bit too meaty at points. Like the, the main issue is that you are really encouraged to focus down certain units, but those certain units usually are... It's 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 spooky. It can get really spooky. I do encourage the. I should put a side note in there that the game masters should be aggressive as fuck when making units. You know, it's on a lot of these games, a lot of these tactics games. If you look at like Mountain Blade, uh, Battle Brothers, even Romance Three Kingdoms, like all of these games, the usually the the problem, the gimmick. Is that you have a lot, like, you are at a, a distinct disadvantage until you turn it around. Battle Brothers, you may have, you know, you may be outnumbered six to, you know, you may be outnumbered. They have six, you have five. That's a severe disadvantage in that game. Like, you, like, there's another guy ready to stab you to death. So it's kind of like you have to, like, what's the plan? Okay, well, we want to kind of mitigate their advantage. How do we do that? We want to... Do these things, even think games like Fire Emblem, where you have the tactics of you, a player, while they only have the tactics of the computer to do things. This one gets a little bit harder, so I tried to emulate that. And I would say, if I was running this, so I was going to run this for my friends, uh, I, even though I know my friends would hate this, game, but they hate. Uh, what I actually know, one of my friends would hate it because he hates resource management. But I would throw. A, pretty nasty enemies at them like just a good number of enemies but they wouldn't be pulling off some of the crazier stunts like they would be 
So it'd be kind of at that moment of like, well, we're just at a severe disadvantage currently. However, we're the ones thinking ahead. We're thinking of cooler ideas. Funnily enough, actually, uh, Eric, uh, this is not one of my longer games. Like, I think out of all my games that I've written, actually, I know which one's the longest. Like, by far, the longest one is... Where is it? Uh, I always lose it. There we go. Heart of Darkness is by far the most I've actually written. Because this game is super massive. No good reason. And actually, there is a reason. It's that I kept adding more shit to it. Like, this one is... How big is Hearts of Darkness? Now this is the this is the combined document. This is everything. This is 144 pages, about 28,000 words. Now, what I want you to remember with this is at about let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Add about another like. 25,000 words on top of that for each of these for each of these books add about another like on, on top of all of these add about 25k not 25k about I would say about like 5,000 more words minimum even that's kind of underselling myself there like, I, I, what I need to do is I need to go through everything and just double check how much I actually typed with this game in particular. Because this one's a big boy right here. Like, it, it's kind of hard to get a good one because I integrate a lot of these games, these, these seven games, into this one. Which, it gets a little bit weird because Hearts of the Valkyria add things to this game and vice versa. And yeah, we also have the Relic Frontier Wars here, which is its own thing, mind you. The only other one that, like, I would say has potentially more, potentially, is BCS, Blood, Coin, and Steel, which I need, I fucking need to PDF this game one day. Blood, Coin, and Steel is the first game. Nope, this is Notepad Anon's first thing. Like, no pet add-on would not be here if Blood, Coin, and Steel wasn't here. Blood, Coin, and Steel is... How big are you? You're 27,000 words. Uh, with 112 pages. However, um... Bear in mind... All of these, so these six are, these six have a good amount in each. Like, grant, the Grand Campaign. Dang it. Hello, phone. Uh, this one is killed. Like, this, this one broke me. Like, this one's a nightmare to deal with. Like, this has about 45. This has about, I think, 50 pages in it? And half of these are just, like, blanket texts of words. Like, yeah, this is what majority of this is. It is just blanket text of words of me going over everything. And then we go to some, if you want to see like truly like autism tier stuff, I track every single, uh, <laughs> every single character in Game of Thrones I go over every single one, keep track of every single dragon, every single character, and then we hit fucking Jaehaerys. Jaehaerys had all of these goddamn kids. <laughs> and each of the kids, and then we had all of the notable death. I keep track of everything in this one. 
uh, yeah, it gets, it just keeps getting worse. And worse. And worse. There's just more. And then you can see, like, notable deaths. Like, there are actually, there's just a lot here. And there's, like, barely any mechanics. Because I legitimately cannot afford to have mechanics in this, in this version of the game. Because there are so many. More and more and more and more and more. Yeah, there's um there's a lot with this one. This one's a big boy. Yeah, I also had to go in like all the alternate scenarios because people wanted alternate scenarios, and god damn it, I gave them that. But a lot of them are like that. Most of the pages are unformatted. Uh they are formatted. Mind you, I, I went through them. This is literally a primer here. Like, that is a primer. Because people wanted it back when we still had the Song of Ice and Fire role-playing game threads. When those were there, I had to... I wrote it all. Any Anytime you see, like, oh, you know, Song of Ice and Fire role-playing, you know, threads, you know, game that we wrote, uh, it's me. I wrote it. No one else. <laughs> Me. <laughs> One second. And double, yeah, to make an A5, double the page count. Nah, no. Actually, I flirted with some of them. Like, you also get a lot of these where people would ask for, ask for things, and people wanted what people wanted with dragons, so I gave them dragons. People wanted this, so I gave them this. There were a lot of things in this one, and then we have all the minor expansions. These are just tiny ones. It's awful. <laughs> Uh, but, let's see. That one's pretty, that one's probably the longest. Hearts of Darkness is either as long or a little bit shorter. What other ones are long? Endless Adventures is pretty long. Project Tactics is unnecessarily long. I'm trying to think of the other ones. Table Talk Online can, uh, bumped up a little bit. Uh, Monster Girl Adventures also bumped up a little bit. I'm trying to like go over all the games. <laughs> uh, if I were to... The, at one point, I actually recorded, literally, at, I went through every single one of my games, just raw page count and number count. Uh, it, it got big for, for no reason. Finally got an idea for two Lumen games. I need to go over Lumen. One day I will go over Lumen. I, I need to just embrace the chaos and just do it. But I don't want to go over Lumen because I really hate. Like, I just don't want to. Let's actually, let, let, let's go on a magic adventure. What's on itch right now? Oh, hey, look, everyone. It's Lancer, my favorite game. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was going to save this for the week. I was going to save this for the Saturday, but I want to... It's right here, so I want to kind of tell people about it. So, this is Tournament Arc. It's a game about tournament arcs and things like that. You know, an anime. I'm like, all right. Cool idea. Right? Right. I thought this was another game, because there's another game, actually, on Kickstarter, which is weirdly the same thing. Like, weirdly so. Uh, let me actually bring it up. Like, it... I... I... I thought I was going insane when I first saw it. Like, I thought I was like, am I misseeing, like... 
I think I'm not seeing something correctly because it was just odd. I was like, something is very wrong here. Uh, we're not going to really... We'll go through over these on the weekend, uh, which, fun fact, uh, this weekend is going to be a long-ass stream. I got like six games I need to go over. When was that one? Because it has this... Is it called Vars? Is it Varsity? Is that what it's called? But I saw it. They're oh, and they're oh, hopefully they get funded. It'll be fucking hilarious if they do. Uh, yeah, there's tournament arc. They're not. I don't. They're not getting funded very fast. That's not very good for them. That's really not good. They need to get funded fast with those kind of things. Uh, where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Come on. Yeah, it, it's one of those things where I was having a bit of a panic attack of like. I could have, like, I was being gaslit by its own, by the own, by the game. I'm like, something is going wrong here, actually. Where are you, where are you, where are, where are you, you, we are. Ah, there we go. So. This weirded me out. Because this is Fight with Spirits, sports drama RPG. And then there then there's this one, which is the same thing. Is this a TSL expansion? No, it's not. It's just incredibly similar. Like eerily similar with the same Concept and I will go over these this weekend just because I think it's so weird And I want to go over it because it's it's a trend I notice and you can uh, also you can uh, you can see the favorite if you can't really tell already uh, Fun fact It's not tournament arc But that's actually kind of fascinating like that's it's a really odd the big difference in one is that one of them is funded, correct, with about four times the needed four times the needed budget to get it funded. It was just really weird that they popped up at the same time, and they wanted the same thing. It was like it was very, very um, uh, well, let's just call it convenient. That uh, sports art, that uh, tournament arc showed up when it did. It was like, oh, okay, then. Color me intrigued. Yeah, and I hate. So, so every now and again, I just really dislike itch.io because they don't really. The thing is, itch.io is not built for physical games. It's really not. Oh, hey, there's mine. Uh, and it's not really built for, for it, because you can't really sort through things very easily. Man, even if you could, people would still find a way to not let you do that. Mostly because a lot of these are like, yeah, it's like custom Blade in the Dark rule books. Like, I want original games. I don't want a custom rule book for another game. That's not what I want. No pen, no want. Oh, Jesus, there's so fucking many. And they all... St and I have... And I feel... Nothing. For either any of them. And drive through, Like, drive through isn't bad. Like, out, out of anything, like... drive through is better than most... The problem is, drive through is perpetually about 2006. Like, this was really cool back in the 2000s, like, early 2000s, like, and it's never really left that 2000s kind of opinion. Also, hot as small press. Oh, wow, look, Andrew McMeal's publishing. Andrew McMeal's is not a fucking small publisher. They own the Sunday fucking funnies. No. <laughs> Not how that works. 
a multi-billion dollar, you know, a multi-million dollar corporation is not small. Cordelia needs a king. Yeah, 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 yeah. Find some odd ones. This is st this still amazes me that this is selling. Like, yeah, like <laughs> people buy the shit. This is adamantine tier. Like, this is a big ass game. Like, Adam adamantine is actually like really damn good compared to a lot of them. Like, yeah, that's like. Only 131 products. Yeah, 131 products have actually hit 131. Only point one, only point twelve percent of the actual games on Drive Through RPG have hit that. And you want to know what the worst part is? Half of them are shit. It's things like it's like these multi-level battle maps. Like, a lot of them are this. It's like, oh, wow, that's great. That's awesome. I love it. I love these multi-part battle mats. Like, these really, really sell it. Or Hero Kids, which... Uh, ask if they have 24-pound paper. Uh, you usually what happens here's a here's a here's a printing thing um yeah the shipment fee would be expensive but here's the funny thing with uh come when it comes to printing uh but if you want to do like a legit book like a legit book book go with gloss or actually i would I'd probably recommend matte paper over gloss paper gloss kind of has some weird issues sometimes but i recommend matte as that's what most books are made of these days uh, if you are just doing like a sample copy, try to go for 24 pound paper or instead of 20 pound paper, they're going to try to sell you 20 pound paper because it's cheaper, it's cheaper and hell of a lot easier to print on. Yeah. Gloss paper is a bitch. I like gloss for like, yeah, yeah. If you're just doing that, ask for 24 pound paper, they will know what you're talking about. You might, it might be called different for you though, because it wouldn't be American standard. It would be like, but it's pretty much like heavier standard paper. That's the best way I can say it. Like if you get a shitty piece of, like if you just print something from the library or something, it's going to be on 20 pound. You 24 pounds, a little bit more expensive. Usually like where I worked, it was like two, two cents. Yeah, they, sh like, kind of ask them. They might know, or they might just print on the better paper. Like, sometimes we would have to print on 20 pound, and 20 pound sucks. <laughs> like, 20, 20 pound is very simple, very cheap, very easy. But, you're just doing a sample book, that should work pretty well. If you want it to look, if you want, like, a good, nice version of it, you can, or if you, if you want a, just a basic version... Um, comb binding, if they offer comb binding. Usually print not on paper. Or what are they, like, um, fabric? Oh, oh, they're, they're an actual, like, print shop then. Yeah, no, they'll have it. They'll have it then. The thing is, they probably, they probably don't like doing small format stuff, though. Small format does not pay, fun fact. Like, Small format does not pay jack diddly shit. Like, the big bucks come in when someone orders, like, 700 of something. And that's where you actually get your money from. Because it pays for itself. Um, but yeah, uh, comb binding. I like comb binding, personally. I like the, the binding there, but spiral binds. If you're feeling dangerous, you could maybe go for a uh, god. What was it called? It was um, not a glue bind. I can see it. I can see it in my head. I know exactly what it is. You get the sheet. You get pretty much the um, pretty much what it is is like it's um the spine of the book, but there's a glue cover on it. There's a glue thing on it. What you do is you would put the put it in there and you put it in a heater machine effectively. 
and the heater machine kind of does its, you know, you put it in there and it heats up and it's pretty much glue binding itself. I remember what we'd have to do is we'd have a little machine, we'd put it in there. That might actually be, that might actually be better. See if they, that should be right. <laughs> Again, I don't know the direct conversions. I, I work, I work in an American print shop. But usually the heated heated bindings are that if you want something that looks really nice, go with that. Like if I were to make a pitch to somebody, like if I were to go to like a, a publisher with an example book, I would have a clear cover. I'd have the actual meat of the book. I'd have the, the glued binding. And that's what I would hand them. Probably put it on 20, pa 20 page on uh, 20, uh, 24 pound paper. That's because it has that nice and 24 pound paper really gets that color to pop sometimes, but I don't have an artist, so. Uh, what's actually on here? Yeah, also, Hero Kids is a racket. Like, I, I have no answer for what the fuck Hero Kids is. I have the book. I need to go through the book. Because I am fascinated by it. I don't, it's, always, it's always interesting to see what's here and what's not. Because, like, Exalted is here. Uh, the Perilous Wild is here. And there's some that make a lot of sense, and others that make no sense. Though I will say, Keep on the Borderlands definitely makes sense, because Keep on the Borderlands is amazing. It's a really damn good module. But, uh, there is a god that Mork Borg has not hit Adamantine yet. Kids on Brooms. Kids on Brooms. Kids on fucking brooms. Yeah, no, that's six. Yeah, if you can get that heavy, yeah, uh, three hundred gram. Yeah, no, three hundred gram. That that's like fucking. That's some heavy shit. And mage, I have a special affection for mage, but yeah, I know kids on brooms. I still need to go over kids on bikes, because everybody everybody likes kids on bikes. Kids on bikes is the greatest thing since sliced fucking fucking bread. A perilous lie, uh, wild. Oh god. What? Oh, it's apocalypse. It's apocalypse world. Blech. <laughs> remember Dungeon World? I remember Dungeon World. They mate. I was actually in a conversation with someone the uh, earlier today, actually, because they announced uh, for a World of Darkness. They actually announced they're going to be making a television series. Yeah, they're going to be making a new television series, possibly for um, Vampire. And I think that's really cool because guess what we might get? Are you ready for a Kindred the Embrace 2? <laughs> Hell yeah, I am. I'm ready. I'm fucking ready. <laughs> but... Yeah, they announced that was going to be a new thing. I, them calling that, you know, the thing that bothered me the most, they kept calling it the Vampily. It, not the, it was like the, it was the Vampily instead of family. I'm like, I fucking hate this. God fucking damn it, White Wolf. But Dungeon World is weird. Because Dungeon World has now hit a point. Now, we've hit a point in Dungeon World history that you can never, like, Dungeon World cannot escape, you know, one very important man. Uh, and they, the problem is, they can't escape him. Remember Adam Koble being a weird sex pest live on, t like, you know, live on camera? Oh yeah, we'll get van oh yeah, definitely it'll be Vampire Diaries. Damn straight. But like any kind anytime like Dungeon World comes up, like Adam Kobol is almost immediately mentioned afterwards. Because he's a weird sex pest man. Like 
He's a weird sex pest. Yeah, he does still exist. I don't think he really does anything anymore. I think he... I think he disappeared after all of the... You know... You know effectively, effectively sexually assaulting a character live. Like... Eh. He writes Dungeon World to you. Adam, nothing Adam touches will ever be good anymore. That's the problem with Adam. Like Adam Koble is like, anything he like looks at now will always be tainted by, wait, weren't you the person who like graphically like described a robot, you know, you know, robo rape. I wouldn't be surprised. Dungeon World 2, let's go on a match level. Let's go on a magic adventure, Dungeon World 2e. <laughs> Sage, I've seen Sage around every now and again. Adam Koble, I've seen around, unfortunately. Like, this is Sage, like, Sage is, I've seen him around, he's an interesting duck. Because I remember Dungeon World was big on Google, like the Google Circles, I believe that's what it's called. Like that was the big thing. It was on it was on the Google platform that everyone liked it. Promethean the created, yay! Murder the multitude, no. Urban sh urban shadows, urban fucking shadows. All right, that's cool. I mean, I like urban shadows. I get the cool idea. The quiet. I always find it fascinating. Buried without ceremony, everyone's like, "Man, we love like we love the quiet year." Nobody talks about any of the other shit they do. Like they have not. The only thing other like big thing they've ever put out was Monster Hearts, but they have a lot of weird shit. Like just a. Oh, this weird. Like I look at their website, they got a bunch of shit on there. But yeah, drive through isn't perfect. It's better than most. I will say that. Like, I will say drive through is probably better than most because you can actually kind of sort through who you actually want to deal with, rather than just kind of like here's a th like here's a thousand options, take your pick. Which I think. Itch does better. Itch does better with like actually having a face to the product a little bit more. I but I think drive through is better when it comes to actually like getting it out there. Storyteller Vault is effectively drive through at this point. Not it's weird. Like it's you usually like the weird thing is you find a lot of people going through their own stuff. Now, or they're like selling it through their own storefront. Like, there's a few of those. Like, um, let me see if I can remember correctly. Yeah, okay. Like, you end up with like, oh, wow, look at all this community content stuff. This is pretty cool stuff. Uh, where is it? Because... Yeah, Storyteller Vault right there. Where is it? There, I do know, there is actually a thing on... on drive through that lets you effectively see... Uh, yeah, published Pathfinder and Starfinder modules. It's things like this. Like, there are a few of these out there for different... Yeah, for different companies, some of them have their own different amounts of drive through but them, and then I know a few of them have their own, like, community programs, I think. Well, it's like, um... drive through RPG community... Programs? Is that, what I, is that what I'm trying to think of? 
Ah, what are the community content programs? That's what I'm looking for. Let's see. Uh, Age of Studios, Fantasy Flight Games for Genesis, Chaosium, Cortex Plus, Mongoose, Multi Cook Games, Wizards of the Coast, the EM Publishing, the Wine Community, the Fat Dragon Games, Atlas Game. Like, a lot of these guys have their own things that all do their own slightly different concept. Like, that's just all the books, I believe. Like, it's like Dragon Bite community, being a Dragon Bite community crea creator, you can do that. Cool, like, yeah, Story Path, Nexus. Like, a lot of them have their own unique ones of doing it's it's kind of like a license it's kind of not drive through is really weird about it though like it's like well you have to make sure that this is a very specific way of doing things like i get it but but please what the hell is contagion contagion is second edition book contagion what the hell is contagion I've never heard of this. Should I know this, Contagion? That's a good start. It's a really good start. Two stars. Aegis Studios. Yeah, we're getting a mini deep dive now, bitch boys. Yeah, what? Contagion 5e Alpha Test. Oh, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. All right, that's... Huh. I, I feel very sad that they have to put that in there. That's a gold seller. Because gold sucks on <laughs> drive through relatively speaking. But I think we learned a lot. I think we learned a lot about ourselves today. But like I would love, like one thing that I would love, I would love to see more uh, foreign games actually enter the market a little bit more reliably. I guess that would be the name for it. Because a lot of them just kind of have to get thrown out there and hope for the best. And I think that's one of the reasons why we see Kickstarter be as popular as it is. Is because you can launch a game on Kickstarter, do the whole nine yards, people are going to buy it. And you're kind of forcing people to like sign up for a mailing list almost. Like, do you like our game? Please, here's the art. Like, here's our mailing list. Please, please, we're begging you. You know, stay with us. It's <laughs> oof. Yeah, it's the Brazilian like Brazilian market is really fascinating. And I've talked with I've talked with other Brazilians and stuff and about the the RPG market down there. You guys have a really weird market. Uh, I know the. Eastern European market is strange, but Varric, you've gone over that with me before, and that that shit's a mess over there. <laughs> that is a disaster area, but it's a hilarious disaster area. We don't really see much coming out of Western Europe these days, though. Like we real, you really don't. Like there's a few Italian, like there's a few Italian games. There's a lot of Spanish games, and there are a lot of um, French games. Like there's a lot of those games coming out, or that have been, that have come out. We just don't see here, which kind of sucks. And I know there's actually a big Spanish company. Uh, actually, RP. Uh, we'll do. Now this is going to be me attempting to desperately remember. Yeah, because. There was a thread a long time ago where people went over 
Oh yeah, this I, I made that thread. There was one guy, he was like, I like tell me about foreign games. Like, what do you guys Is this a thread? Is it... Yeah, this has to be it. Yeah, haha, this is the one I remember. I actually made this one. And all by this one company. Uh there we go. A no so no solo no solo lor. No solo lor. Deep. I don't speak Spanish, but these guys make a lot of cool games, and I would love to see them. Uh, let's see, like... Like, these are some of... These are some of the games, mind you. Like, Steam States. Literally just a steampunk fantasy game. Only in Spanish, for some reason. Guardians of Pandemonium. Yeah, I, I understand, like, why people want to, like, I really do. Like, the, but there are a few, like, Peacemaker, god, I would kill to, like, even see this game. Like, this one's actually, like, based off a pretty popular series in Japan, I know that much. But, like, Vampira! Maho Shoujo! Like, they pump out a lot of games, but I, I think this is, like, um... Oh, what's... There is a specific name for it. I can't remember the exact company. But this is one of those companies that do an absurd amount of publishing in Spanish. Like, any game, any tabletop role-playing game that enters Spain has to go through these guys. And I find that really cool because they have to translate everything. So you see a lot. And the reason they're like, they look like this, like, what are the fuck Maho Shoujo, like, Maho Shoujo by, by these guys. Like, alright, cool, this looks actually pretty interesting. Alright, fuck it. We've got drama. We've got Dark Magical Girl. We got aggressive, weird Spanish anime. I want to see more of this stuff. I want to see more of it because it's actually pretty neat. Uh, where's that other one? Yeah, like, Dream Raiders sounds fucking metal, because guess what, you have to raid people's fucking dreams. That's just cool. This one actually got translated to English. I do know that, yeah, sticker and monster tokens included, because they do a lot of games made for kids, which I think is really fascinating that these guys kind of specialize in games for younger people people because we don't really see a lot of those yeah like there's a lot uh this is the one that i want notepad wants this game notepad wants to play this i want this badly because the entire idea is that you are playing like pre-humanity against ancient space aliens affect you know ancient space you know travelers and you're just trying to ungabunga kill them and I'm like, that sounds pretty fucking neat. Like, I'm kind of in. You get all these weird Spanish art feeds. Like, I want to see a lot of these, but you just don't see that many. For a good reason, mind you. Like, a lot of Spanish... Like, I remember this thread got kind of, like, eaten by the Spanish RPGs. Uh, because I find... Because they were just popular. Oh yeah, we also have a lot of roll and roll books. But I would love to see more Spanish stuff. I know again, I know the French have quite a few. The Italians have a good amount. Not an absurd amount, but a good amount. Yeah, the Russian Isekai RPG yet. Yeah. Oh, uh, Silverhoof, yeah, I remember you talking about these guys before. Uh, this is like the Russian version of that, like, Silverhoof's pretty cool. 
Oh god, we might be, um... Oh no. Hey, Varric. Good news. Um, we, we may... <laughs> uh, Trainer's Cave may be exploding as we speak. <laughs> we may be free from another splinter. Uh, okay, so... Yeah, these guys do a few cool ones. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Mizuki's dead. I need to go over Mizuki's dead, actually. I'll probably go over that one in Elliot. I'll probably go over this one in a, um... Just a notepad shelf. But yeah, these guys are pretty cool. With Patreon, actually. Oh, wow. 134 a month. But yeah, no, it's like, I... I think that's one thing that here in the West... We have a bad tendency of doing. Especially here in the States. Stateside, we are terrible about this. Uh, we think that the only games available are ours or whatever quirky thing we like. And nothing else exists. And I think we've kind of closed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, he did say that. I didn't think. Usually when I get like 30 pings from a single server, I'm like, ah, yes, Trader's Guild is exploding. But. And I, I think we're seeing, I think now, I think in the past few, I, I'd say about past three years past actually about past two three years i think we've seen uh, a pushback slightly against foreign audiences when it comes to western games not necessarily the other way around i think we've been a little bit more accepting of games but we've seen a pushback against them we've seen a lot of japanese stuff come out we're seeing a lot i'm seeing a lot of russian stuff come out a lot of brazilian stuff a lot of Spanish, I'm like, I'm seeing a lot of different foreign games come out in their own countries, obviously. And that's, I, I find that very interesting. And I would like to see, I, I would like to say that we're just going to see a renaissance and we're going to see more again. No, we're not. Like, uh, until, until Wizards of the Coast either bites it or magic just eats D&D, &D, we're not really going to see too much of a change in that regard, simply because there's no incentive for anyone to do anything else. And I, I, re <laughs> thing is, I distinctly remember someone saying, hey, you know, Wizards of the Coast wants competition. They want people to, you know, go against them. They want, no, Wizards doesn't. Wizards just wants to be on top. It's, we're in an odd situation for tabletop RPGs. Uh, I think we're, we've hit a we've hit a very bizarre situation, and that very bizarre situation is both a good thing and a very bad thing. Kind of depends on your perspective on it. On one hand, the good news is we've hit such a point where you can do and make just about anything you want. And you can upload it to a website, you can monetize it, you can do the whole nine yards. It's very easy. The actual, like, effort to do this is very minimal. However, that is a, that is a double-sided sword. One that's going to come crashing back into your face if you're not careful. Because it is so easy to do this, people are now, well, I say anyway, people are diluting the market. And by the dilution of the market, it's if you put three thousand, if you put a hundred games out there, and 20, 20 of them are good, that's twenty percent of them are really good. You know, you, it's like this is good. And like there's some bad game, but everyone kind of has their own. Pit. You put a thousand games out there, and twenty percent, and only twenty of them are good. The likelihood of people finding that twenty is very low. And what this has kind of created is what I usually like to rant against. You end up with games like Lumen, for example, like Lumen, PBTA, all of those games that are not really games, 
They are frameworks. And they want other people to make games for them. And then sell them. That's kind of the idea. Like, we're going to put in the minimal amount of effort for stuff. Because it's very hard to make good things. It's a lot easier to put out things. And we've kind, we're kind of hitting a, a saturation point. Where it's a bucket, it's a bucket of crabs situation as well. Is since there are so many, yeah, yeah, you get what I said. It's we've hit a a point where there are so much stuff out there that to kind of to escalate yourself beyond that. To be, you know, get seen, get folk, get kind of noticed. You have to fight, kill, and die. And it's quickly becoming not a game about, hey, I wrote something that's really good. You know, I put my heart and soul into writing this. So I think it's really good rules. It's really well play tested. It's, you know, we have all the cool ideas. It's about something else now. Hey, everyone, I'm... YouTuber man, I make a bajillion dollars already. Cool, do this. Hey everybody, I made a game about I'm gonna use TSL for an example here. Um, you know, you thirsty sword lesbian. Like you immediately can get it out there, and it's and we've kind of hit kind of the post situation of them where the mechanics are now secondary. The actual game part of the game is secondary to that initial pitch. That initial, you know, punch in the face. Which I feel is kind of a sad thing. And this is why I like doing what I do here. Like, this is, like, the main thing of why I do the Curious Cases. Why I do look over odd games. Why I go over the process of all these games. Is because I want people to understand that stuff goes into these things. And look at... The numbers, look at cool mechanics, look at these, rather than just looking at the pretty pictures. Like, Lumen is a... Lumen maybe isn't the best idea, because I haven't actually looked too hard at Lumen, because I immediately saw it, and every part of my body said, Oh, God, not another one. And I just immediately discounted it. Like, I just immediately just wrote Lumen off. Like, I need to look at it. I have a few Lumen games set up to look at, but I, I, it's just kind of that dread moment of like, oh, God, not another one. And, like, I <laughs> I go through a lot of games. I go through an absurd number of games. It is painful sometimes. <laughs> and there are a lot, and it's... <laughs> See, I just find that amusing. Because we we've hit the point where Blades in the Dark, which was kind of a which was heavily inspired by PBTA, is now has its own you know derivatives of inspiration. I find that fascinating. I would love, I would adore to go through and build just like a fucking family tree of shit. A PBTA, which the thing is, and I, I never get this out of your head. Powered by the Apocalypse is not bad. It's not. Apocalypse World is actually really damn good. Vincent Baker's kind of a dumbass. And kind of an edgy teenager in a man's body. But he definitely knows how what he wants, and he does it really well. The problem is... Yeah, might be a derivative of a traveler. Not quite. It has its own ideas. But the problem is... The problem, the, the key issue, the, the dream, the problem is that people saw it and they do something really lazy with it. Or they don't quite know what they want to do with it, so they just copy-paste things. Which is kind of its own sad thing really it's and that's why i kind of break down a lot of apocalypse world games into like this is puritan apocalypse world this is derivative apocalypse world or this is like completely deviant you take ideas but they don't expand on the ideas 
They don't actually do something unique with it. That's the thing I hate about Apocalypse, the Powered by the Apocalypse system. And that's why I really don't like about a lot of these, like, generic systems people like using a lot. The re usually the really light generic systems I, I don't like is because people don't do anything interesting with them. And instead what they do is the same shit has, that has done been done before. And I always find that kind of a tragedy. Like, Savage, Wor yeah, Savage World is good. Like, don't get me wrong, Savage World is good. But if someone were to make... Yeah, but if someone were to make this Savage Worlds, but not, nothing has changed in, like... And just or made just a bad Savage Worlds, like, game, it would be like, this is still bad. You know, like, I don't hate the license. I hate the fact that you did nothing with it. That you've done nothing interesting with it. Savage World is a little bit more aggressive because it actually has some, like, mechanical mechanics to it that are kind of hard to break out of. Usually when it's like, here's my life, like, Founded in Follicles, that's what it was. That was a really shitty beard one. What are you going to, like, what? No, no one's going to, no. Like, powered by lesbians? Like, no, no, nothing valuable, nothing of value is here. Don't. You've taken something good from another person. And you've, you know, bastardized it. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. People, this is why I always tell people when they're like, first devving game. Like, I, like, I want to learn how to dev a game. I want to learn, I want to do stuff. I'm like, yeah, steal shit. Ruthlessly. Find things that you enjoy and look through them. Read it. Say, I love this part. I love that part. I think this is a cool idea. I think this is stupid. Like, I think this is the dumbest, stupid, fucking piece of shit, goddamn disgusting abomination of Christ I've ever seen. Also, yeah, I did get, uh, <laughs> I got the cut. I got, I got my own. Ha 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 ha. This week? Nah, so fucking lootly not. Maybe some other time. Like, it's, it's okay to take ideas. I'll never say that it's not okay. It's, but here, here, let me, let me just write this note up here for everyone. Um, here, let me just. There we go. It's okay to take ideas and build your own thing with those ideas. Just rehashing them over and over again. That's not good. It's really lazy. And that's what we've kind of hit a weird point in the market. Where we see a lot of people just kind of rehashing ideas without actually innovating at all. And those rehashes have come to dominate the market. So it's like, okay, what do we do now? And the answer is nothing. We... It sucks, but I mean, there's a reason why we see like... 500, you know, 5e game, campaign games come out. It's like, yay, it's fucking 5e. <laughs> Ooh, what, what, whatever shall we do? The answer is nothing. Yeah, I mean, I, I do the same thing. Like some, like, there's a reason I have like this. Like, this is the lexicon. This is literally all of, the, like, various ideas I've come up with in other games that I take from frequently. Like, I use them a lot in different games. Just because I'm like, it's here already, like, my list of weapons. I have a list of weapons. I'm not probably, I don't really need to go in there and try to design a completely new set of weapons if I know I already have it, unless the damage system is going to be weird. Cool, don't need to worry about it. Completely non-factor to deal with. Don't really care. Don't really need to think about it too much. Or you and or I have also my SRDs here. Like here's the waifu core game. Here's D twenty hundred. It's I also I should put in the notepad narrative framework in there. It's yeah, go for it. Yeah, there's no shame in doing it. Just don't copy paste. Innovate. Use things as a baseline to make something interesting with it. Don't just copy-paste something and call it your own. 
or call it unique. I hate that. Hell, even with Gai, like, Gai has a lot of parts from different games that I've made. But I mashed them together and kind of made them their own thing. Yeah, it's, uh... It's long. I, <laughs> I can do an entire stream of me talking industry stuff. I can do an entire stream of me just going over shit. And I may actually do, like... For a Saturday stream, I may do a classroom of just like, here's the open classroom, ask questions, I have like a basic lesson plan to go over. Yeah, no, that's... Being unique is not always the best idea. Like, I've read a lot of unique games. I've led some games that are really unique. And they're fucking garbage. <laughs> like, just terrible. And it's, uh, I remember I was talking with somebody. He's an asshole from the one of the loot servers I'm in. He's just a dick. He's a jackass of a human being. But he made a good point being like, I don't want to, like, why bother reinventing the wheel? There's some merit to that, even though I think his reasoning is because he's a lazy fuck, but I don't like him in general. But... Sometimes things are the way they are for a reason. If you innovate too much, there's a chance you end up with VTNL. And VTNL is bad. Or worse, you end up with Eorus. <laughs> a great idea of just Eorus. <laughs> yeah, no. That is... A majority of cool ideas usually come from a high concept. You have your you have your idea there, Varric. You have exactly you know made by a guy who only played board games. It's sometimes good to get some of those outside opinions. Uh, sometimes though, uh, it is uh, you end up with some very odd games, or you get games that are designed by people who have played nothing but D and D, which are also very fascinating and very scary <laughs> to a degree. Like, the VTNL guy, I don't know if you've ever, like, listened to him, like, some, like, some of the things he said are very fascinating. Uh, like, he had his own very unique opinion on what games were, and I, he's an interesting duck, like, in that regard, very interesting, but arguably I'd be okay with actually having... <laughs> I'd be okay with having some more people outside of the industry, outside of kind of the core group looking at things. You know, that's why I, there's a reason I like, like telling people, like, when in doubt, look at video games. <laughs> like, and um, I tell people to back hack games. If they want to like, does, like, get some design practice in, I tell them to back hack something. How do you mimic a game that you like systems in a on the table sometimes it's pretty easy other times it gets a little bit more complicated how do you back hack you know fire emblem systems all right you know we, we can work with that how do you back hack pokemons though there's a reason why there's like four pokemon games out there and nobody can agree what they are what they like it's it's interesting if you if you look at things as just pure numbers, things get a little bit wonky. If you kind of open your open the third eye, you could say, and kind of look beyond, you can actually see some pretty interesting stuff. And I would like to see more. But uh, I'm gonna disappear now because my throat is dying, and I need to get ready for tomorrow because I get to go over Oji Sans, which is just going to be old men fighting Satan. And drinking. Pack <laughs> hack guns into fatal. Ah! See, I need to do the fatal stream. I need I, I've been drinking water this time this entire time, mind you. I need to I need to do a full curious case on fatal. Just sit down, go over the entire book. All like six hundred pages of it. And just 
let everybody experience the beautiful disaster area that is fatal. And no one will ever be able to stop me. And Trader's Guild is officially nuked, by the way. It just died. I just saw it disappear. The Ripperoni Pepperoni. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to disappear now. Godspeed, good luck. Hopefully all of you have a wonderful rest of your day. I will talk to you all tomorrow, around the same time. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know yet. And then on Saturday, we're going to do the Curious Case of Mecha RPGs, which I'm I'm pretty excited for that one, because I I went through a few of them. The The, the big one that I went over, that I had a lot of fun with, well, and I, I've been I've been posting it around a little bit, but it's gonna be interesting, kind of going over it. But uh, this is Full Metal President. I'll let you guess what it's based off of, them, but this game is actually pretty fun. Like it's it's pretty it's pretty interesting, and uh, a lot more like it. So thank you all, Godspeed, good luck, and I will catch you all on tomorrow. If you need me, you know where to reach me.